All right, let's do it. Let's get right into it. Male depression. Is male depression the same as female depression? No, it's not. And in our culture now, we talk about depression kind of like it's a one-size-fits-all. Well, depression feels the same for everybody. Not necessarily. Some people go through... Some people are diagnosed with actual depression. People just go through depressive situations in life. Their life situation is depressing them. Or some people just respond differently, and men and women respond differently. But in this video, I'm talking about how men respond differently to depression and how to treat it because that's the issue is that we think we treat male and female depression and diagnose it the exact same way no 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 it's very different it's very different I use an example a very controversial example but an example that makes sense when you have school shooters, normally, statistically, they are male. The people that commit these awful crimes are male. And why? Why are they male? Because you see, like, the news media will say it all the time. They're like, oh, this guy just, you know, needed someone to talk to. He needed someone to open up and talk about his feelings. And they're like, no. Because the action of taking a gun and shooting people, those were the feelings. That was his expressive reaction. That was his, him, him expressing himself. Well, why do men express themselves like that when they're such in a horrible mental state? Why do they express themselves in such a violent way? It all has to do with power. Power. Men need to feel powerful in all aspects of their life. And what creates deep male depression is feeling powerless in your life. Feeling you have no power or no control over your life. Of over your family, your friends, your finances, your career opportunities. You feel like you have no power. You feel helpless, you feel powerless. I will give you an example, which was a very hard moment in my life. My son was born over a year ago, March of 2022. When he was born, he had an infection. We were not allowed to take him home until, he, until this infection passed. This infection did pass, but the doctor still didn't let us take us home because they wanted to evaluate him for another 72 hours or whatever. I was sleep deprived, I was malnourished, I was exhausted, and all I wanted to do was to take my son home. And the infection passed. There was no reason for this doctor to stop us, giving us the red light to take him home there was no reason for it no reason and arguing back and forth with the doctor to the point where I needed to check out and leave because I was gonna do something that I would have gotten into big trouble for yes I was feeling powerless against this doctor absolutely powerless and I had a bit of a breakdown by myself on my own I don't I'm a man. I don't break down in front of people. No, no, no. No, no. When I break down, I do it alone. Usually in the car. Usually. And, yeah, I was alone. And I broke down. I broke down. I was talking to a friend about this. It was the... I told them, word for word, what upset me the most, which caused me to break down, was that feeling of powerlessness. I felt no power or control over the one thing I wanted to have control over was taking my son home and taking care of him. He was just born and all I wanted to do was just take my son home. And that just set me on a crash course. Eventually, yes, 
We took him home that very same day. Because I walked in the house when I had enough. Nothing bad happened. But we just I just told the doctor, like, we're taking him home. I'm not asking for permission anymore. We're taking him home. And he took him home. And it was okay. But male, male depression usually stems from having a lack of power in your life. No control over your life. And how do you diagnose that? Well, you, you know, the same diagnosis gets said for men and women. Well, just talk about your feelings. Talk about your, how you're feeling. Well, I feel powerlessness. Yes. Okay, we know what the issue is. Now we got to take action to fix the issue. How are you going to feel, as a man, how are you going to feel powerful in your life? In all aspects of your life. You know, you make good money, you know, you'll be able to put a lot of money away, a lot of invest, a lot of money. You're not worried about money, you have a great relationship you're with your wife, you have a girlfriend, you have a great sex life, you have a great life with your kids, great relationship. You have power and control over and being able to steal your ship of your life to be able to decide where your life is going. That's power. And that's what makes men feel good. You go to the gym, lifting weights. At the end of that workout, we had a really good workout, you had a good bench press, squat, all that. Really got your heart going, your muscles going. How do you feel? You feel good, you feel powerful. That's it. And that's what causes men's self-esteem and confidence to increase is feeling powerful. So when I go back to the beginning of this video and I talk about male shooters shooting up a school, that action of shooting people is an action of power. That is taking their power back. They are doing it in a very not okay way. It's not, o not okay. It's a very very destructive way, violent and destructive way, completely. But it's their way to get their power back. They want power. Men want to feel powerful. And when it comes to school shooters who are so lost in their own head, and they have no way to gain that power back in their life in a healthy way, so they find it in a very unhealthy way. Men go to therapists and psychologists and talk about their issues. A lot of it stems from just feeling powerlessness. You know, getting getting kicked in an ad in a divorce court, you know, stuff like that. Men have no power in divorce. No power. You're having to you're losing custody of your kids, you're having to pay alimony, you're having to make child custody, you're losing the house, you can see your kids half the time now. That divorce causes men to commit suicide because they've lost power. They've lost power to the state, to the government, to the law. They've lost complete power. When men have control or power of their life, they become a very powerful man. And women like that. Women find that attractive. And then men feel powerful when their woman and their girlfriend is attracted to them. It all stems back to power. Men want to feel powerful. And they express that in unhealthy ways. But they need to learn to express that in healthy ways. That's why I don't... I've done a few videos on this, a few videos back about uh, therapy. I think men going to therapy is beneficial, but I think the uh, diagnosis and the actions that need to be taken to help them through therapy needs to change a little bit. You need to talk, sure, but you also need action. And you need the appropriate action to take the power back in your life. Because usually when men go to therapy, it's usually, or they were told to go to therapy by someone, or they've lost power. And they don't, now they've tried everything and they don't know how to get it back. And sitting there for a year, two years, every, once a week, talking about your feelings, but not doing anything to, not doing anything, not giving them any actionable advice to take that power back. That's the issue. That's the problem. That's why men get depressed. Because they lose control over, over their life. Lots of power. How many times do you think I've said, 
power in this video. Count them. And on that note, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, if this video is a value, value to you, you can uh, subscribe to Time with Personal Growth and Development. And I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one.